Hey YouTube, it's JB Dillon. Today we're going to be looking at this Saba uh, 400 automatic. This came in a couple months back and it got the recap and all that sort of fancy stuff. Uh, but then I got a call back from the customer indicating there was a loud pop out of the speaker and the set went dark. Now, long story short of it, I traced that down to an output transformer, and the primary on the output transformer had shorted. It was about 6 ohms off the chassis. So, uh, then I learned more backstory. Uh, I asked the customer, hey, how long did you use this thing before you brought it in? And he said he had been using it for years with the old, crusty... ERO Leekomatic capacitors and I recall when I found the uh, output tubes they both had grid leakage the grid coupling capacitors were about maybe 50k resistors uh, so this thing had been over biased and was pulling a ton of current through the output transformer for a long long time for crap's sake people don't do that I know everyone gets excited because they find this big beautiful old radio like this then they turn it on and it works and they go wow it works that's so amazing yay and they just keep using it without ever getting it checked out so long story short of it get these things checked get them serviced just because it's working doesn't mean you should continue to use it uh, the service life of the components is far expired yes it's amazing it works get it serviced but the only cosmetic flaw with this is uh, the tuning uh, brass cap is missing. That's about it. I mean, this thing really is pretty. I mean, the cabinet looks awesome. The grill cloth looks awesome. Uh, and yes, I realize that the uh, switch plate there isn't properly aligned. It's coming out. I just slid the chassis in there momentarily to take the video. So anyways, the... Hopefully the magic bullet that I will be using um, Let me see if I can go get it here This is the beast uh, This is a classic tone uh, Single-ended 6BQ5, 6V6 output transformer It has two primaries one at 5,000 ohms one at 7,500 ohms It's got outputs for 4, 8, and 16 ohm it's very compact. Uh, they claim nominally it's designed for 5 watts. The spec sheet says you can go out to 15. I highly doubt that. But as you can see, the spec sheet says 15 watts single-ended. And uh, I researched this transformer. People got a lot of happy reviews. Like the DIY community building their single-ended 6BQ5 Hi-Fi amp. Uh, so... We're going to try to make this work inside of that. So let me take the chassis out and then we'll assess what we're going to have to do. Right, so here's the chassis on the bench. This thing is massive, it's heavy, and it's a stereo unit. Now, this transformer here is still alive. That's still working. Uh, that's not the one that's shorted. Which sucks because that would be easy. However, let me put the camera down a moment and I'll show you the one that is bad. You can see the underside of the chassis is just a sea of components. And there is the guy that's dead. And you can see by the discoloration there on the side versus the uh, rest of it got a little hot and furthermore if I take my meter and we take a look at the primary which I've disconnected from the output tube by the way just because you know troubleshooting sounds let's see this is the 6BQ5 here if we go to the 6BQ5 and we measure from the plate that's 6.9 ohms to ground 
that's the primary it's gone if I disconnect that lead uh, this is the common lead that comes in from the power supply tap which is here uh, that then goes to through the primary to the output tube uh, so this is six ohms off ground not good so we have some challenges and the challenges are we have to find somewhere to put this terminal strip because this terminal strip obviously uh, although it's not entirely associated with the output transformer it does have some components on it so that will need to be isolated and located somehow and then obviously mounting it uh, is another concern Let's see where did I put the little bugger there we go as far as its physical size it's pretty damn close to the original size the mounting centers are really close to the original size and the overall dimensions are really close to the original size I know that the aspect viewable area that you see here makes this look a whole hell of a lot bigger but it's really close and I took dimensions and I spent a lot of time trying to find a transformer that would work with this thing physically because it's got a mount underneath the chassis there's nowhere else to put it so I guess what I'm going to try to do uh, is we're gonna pop this terminal strip loose off of here uh, get the transformer unmounted and uh, just kind of start to pull it loose and see what goes where blah 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 and see how we're gonna mount the other one in there alright so here they are removed and you can see the original one here on the left got really toasty the plastics all melted it's got nice burn marks there on the paper it's uh, it's done and if we look at it down from the top we can see that they're pretty close in size this one's just a smidge wider and if we stick them on top of each other here we can see that the old one is a little bit wider so probably what I'll end up doing for simplicity's sake is uh, cutting notches out of the ends of the ears and then uh, putting washers in so that I can mount it in the original location uh, without too much hassle now as far as the uh, wiring is concerned um, the orange was from the B plus the blue went to the plate this black wire went to ground and this brown wire went to ground um, and then you have this side here which is probably the secondary um, and then you have this this clear wire also went to ground so I'm not sure what that was for really and then you have this black wire here uh, which I think uh, goes up to this terminal pad which then goes out into the speaker terminals uh, on the top of the chassis so pretty straightforward I'm wondering if one of these extra leads was a feedback lead but then again why was it grounded um, yeah I think I have a schematic diagram for this thing uh, let me see if I can find it and then we will uh, see what these windings are depicted as alright so looking at the schematic diagram we see that we have the common uh, primary input which is the red and then the blue goes to the plate just as I had scoped out before and then you have what looks like uh, an output which goes to point X on the uh, let's see brown which they claim goes through ground through a switch not sure what that's about and then whatever FS is this is all in German so don't really know uh, that looks like it's a feedback loop and it looks like there's another feedback loop that goes through a 220k resistor back to the uh, grid of the output tube so it be, could be fun trying to figure out how to deal with that maybe just use like a 16 ohm output tap through a resistor or something like that not really sure uh, 
if we just kind of pull back a little bit. Yeah, they got a switch between stereo and mono, which uh, is in the secondary of the outputs. I guess it just wires them together. I'm trying to figure out what those extra things are for. Of course, it's not really depicted here what's the left and what's the right channel. Like if we look at this one, we see that there is a couple of more leads that come out. And they go back to here, look like more feedback lines. So yeah, I'm not sure what to do with that. That could be the tricky part. I mean, just stuffing a transformer in here is one thing, but actually making it work in the circuit is another. I mean, so far making it fit in here has been the easy part. I mean, look, it fits. We have very tight clearances, but it fits. There's about maybe three millimeters between the transformer and the actual chassis. And I notched the brackets here so I could mount it with the original mounting screws. And it's a tight fit next to the uh, uh, ground for the chassis there. But nothing's being impeded, nothing's being touched or anything like that. Really the only challenge is it's going to be mounting this somewhere where it's not going to interfere with anything. So, yeah. I mean, we're getting there. Probably the next thing to do is to actually wire it up to the uh, to the tube and the power supply and then trace out uh, where the speaker lead should go they've got a 4, 8 and a 16 ohm top I think the actual speakers um, are 3.2 ohmers so fun fun um, I think what I'm going to do next is get this thing wired up at least in the basic sense, we're going to use the 5000 ohm tap because that's about what's ideal for a, an EL84. If it was a 6V6 or something like that, maybe 7500 or 7000, but uh, the 5000 should be good for the 6BQ5. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, trim and cut and wire this thing up and then maybe look and see where the uh, speakers should go. Alright, so here's where we're at so far. Transformers mounted. I made a standoff for the old terminal strip. And it's got plenty of clearance. Don't have to worry about it shorting out. Got the secondaries capped. Gonna wire up the primary and see what we need to do. But so far, so good. Guys, here's where we're at. Uh, transformers installed. I ended up using the 8K tap instead of the 5. Produced better low frequency response. Um, so the 8000 ohm goes to the B voltage, the common goes to the plate. Uh, the other way I was having phase and oscillation problems. The feedback is taping, taken from the gray lead, which is the 16 ohm tap, through a .001 and 220k resistor in series to the low side of the original feedback resistor, uh, which nominally creates a linear frequency response little bit of issues with low frequency below 150 cycles otherwise very linear all the way up secondary load response appears to be good so nominally this setup does in fact work changes to the schematic to reflect use of the new transformer you can see I've got the 16 ohm as the feedback tap through the 0.001 and 220k to the old low side of the original feedback resistor using the 8k tap instead of the 5. So this works. Back in the box it goes. Moment of truth. Let's see uh, how it sounds. Here's my test generator. Stays the same. No, no. <laughs> Now you can thank us.
to go I can pass that box like stock <laughs> Not bad. Need to get an auxiliary fed into it, and this will be good to go. That's about enough of that. So this thing's working great again. Both channels work. It's about as close as I'm going to be able to get with this output transformer. A little bit of low frequency distortion on the right below 100 hertz, but otherwise this thing sounds great. Uh, so he'll be happy with it. I'm happy to get it out of here. This thing's big, it's heavy, and it's pretty, but uh, it's got to go. But I'm going to enjoy it for a while until he picks it up, for sure. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching the videos, guys. More stuff to come.